Hey, I'm Ben. This is my dog Kitty, and that's my RV. Let's break it down first off. What is a charger? It sounds just like what it sounds like, right? It takes 120 volts in, either from shore power or your generator, and it recharges your house batteries. The inverter does just the opposite. It takes power from your 12 volt house batteries and inverts that into 120 volts for your rig. That'll typically be for only a couple of plugs in your in your house, not all of them be for major appliances like a microwave or a roof AC vent. It's only made for kind of lightweight inverting in that regards. So what are the issues with what the factory put in? Well, first off, it's the cheapest and uh, most readily available inverter charger out there. And I'll pop up a picture here of what mine had. There's not really an easy way to program those for different battery types. Now I did find a way to get around this thanks to finding a, a part on eBay, it cost me about $100 and it was a good stopgap. It wasn't a long-term solution. There's also modified sine wave versus pure sine wave inverters pure sine wave pure cleaner power so as an example the inverter that the factory did put in our rig was a modified sine wave and i could hear things like my laptop charger or power supply humming quite often because it wasn't very clean power so electronics typically prefer uh, pure sine wave inverters as opposed to modified sine wave it's just a cleaner power solution then you've also got the the fact of the the wattage output of the inverter that the the factory uses which is typically lower and cheaper and there's a i don't know if you can hear that flock of geese flying overhead right now so what did I do? I did a Victron MultiPlus 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, one of the great things about it is you can program it for the different battery types. Do you have flooded lead acid? Do you have AGM? Do you have lithium? How many amp hours do you have of those batteries? What's the charging profile of those batteries? So you can get very specific on your bulk charge versus absorption, or is there a float? So the different stages of charging a battery. It's also a pure sine wave inverter. So my electronics don't hum or buzz when I use my inverter anymore. And I'm gonna show you how I wired up the whole house to run off of the inverter by only having to run two extra wires. Now, I am not an electrician, uh, full disclaimer. I know enough about 12 volt to get my way around it, but 120 volts a little bit of a different story. But if I can do it, anybody can do it. I'll say one thing that I did learn with 120 volt wire is that the wiring is color coded. So typically uh, what most RVs have coming in, and I'm talking for 30 amp, 50 amp is, is a little bit different, is an orange colored wire, also known as 10 to non-metallic Romex. So 10 is the gauge of the wire uh, and it's kind of a little bit different. The smaller the number is the bigger thickness of the wire. 10 gauge, two conductor wire. There's actually three in there if you include the ground. And I bought a 25 foot run of it, which was not quite enough for my rig. I needed about 35 feet to make it, make it all complete. But basically where that power comes in from the automatic transfer switch, whether you're on shore power or your generator, goes to a circuit breaker panel. The inverter has its own circuit for the three or four outlets that it powers. So what I did was take that 10-2 Romex coming in from my, my automatic transfer switch, shore power generator, and I extended that to where my inverter is. And then the output of the inverter then takes 10-2 wire and goes right into the circuit breaker panel where my original 10-2 wire came in from the transfer switch. So all I did was extend that wire. Two, two pieces of extended wires, basically all it took. Routing it was probably the trickiest part because I had to go behind my shower, uh, kind of in the back part of my bathroom, kind of behind this outside entertainment center that you see here, it's currently closed up to get to where my inverter charger was installed from the factory that I just put my new Victron in the exact same place. So what did I get out of that? Well, now my whole house can run off of my batteries through the inverter. Every single outlet includes a roof AC, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. The microwave draws a ton of power. So before we get into the how, let me talk about the why real quick got a cool schoolie out the window that Kitty's keeping an eye on for me. So there's four reasons why we did this inverter charger upgrade and they all center around how we like to camp. We like to boondock, we like to dry camp. So the first of these four reasons are every day I've got to run the generator to recharge my batteries. And if I've got a more powerful charger, 
that means I get to run the generator less. I'm saving gas, I don't have to listen to the noise, and that's a win-win for me. The second reason ties into that. Now, because this Victron inverter charger is programmable, not only for the battery types, but you can put in the manufacturer-specific charging profiles that your battery manufacturer wants you to use, now you're getting more efficient with that charging profile. And again, you got to run the generator even less if you've got one that you can dial into your specific battery type and then how your specific battery type manufacturer wants those batteries recharged. So I get to run the generator less because of that as well. The third one is I have a higher wattage inverter now. It's also pure sine wave. So I'm getting clean power and I'm getting more of it to run more things simultaneously before I deal with any sort of overload of the capacity for this particular inverter compared to what was in here from the original factory. And then the last piece is the ability to monitor all of this. My current battery state of charge, what's going into or out of the charger or the inverter, all with an app on my cell phone. So if I'm outside the rig, as long as I'm within Bluetooth range or I'm inside the rig, I don't have to be where all of my other display panels are for like my water tanks to see what's going on. I just open up an app on my phone and it tells me literally what's happening, how much or how little is going in or out of those batteries. There's this great feature that the Victron has where let's say you're mooch docking, you're plugged in uh, to a you know, regular 110 volt 10, 15, 20 amp circuit in somebody's house, garage. You're camping in their driveway. You don't have the full 30 amp service to run your roof AC. So the inverter, you can say, well, you're only allowed to pull 10 amps from this circuit. And if you do something like start your AC or your microwave, it will supplement by running the inverter at the same time for just enough power to meet the demand that you're putting on the system at the time. A great way to get by in a less than a 30 amp or a 50 amp situation. What's next? Certainly the ability to put a soft start on my AC so that I'm not shocking the system with so many amps drawing when the AC first starts up, making it a little bit easier on my batteries. Not that I can run my AC for very long off of my batteries. I only have a couple hundred amp hours of lithium. But the idea is if I'm making less of an amp draw when it first kicks on, it's easier on the batteries because I'm pulling less amps over time with an AC soft starts. But that'll be next summer. As you can tell, I'm wearing a hoodie. It's fall time. We're currently in Oregon enjoying the nice cooler weather, so I don't need the AC until next summer. Another feature is the uh, Victron. You can get a Bluetooth dongle to allow you to see exactly what's going on with your inverter from an app on your phone. Uh, as long as you're within Bluetooth range. So great to see what's the current AC input, how many watts are you pulling in, or volts or amps, however you want to look at it, and then what's going out with the inverter or the batteries charging, how much are they charging, and then you can also tie that in, which I did with a Victron smart shunt. So now I can see what uh, state of charge my batteries are at down to a percentage point, 99% versus 9%. And that will talk, they will talk back and forth via Bluetooth to each other. That smart shunt will let my Victron know what's the current load on those batteries, what's the current temperature of those batteries, so that when the inverter or charger is recharging them, it knows the battery temperature is, it can compensate for that if they're cold or if they're hot. I'm back at the circuit breaker panel for my RV. You've got all the AC breakers up here, DC fuses down below. Now, one of these, uh, actually the one that says main, is a 30 amp circuit breaker. And typically, when you plug into shore power, it goes to this breaker first that then feeds the bus bar behind it for all the other breakers. And what I'm gonna show you next is where I took the line coming in from the automatic transfer switch from the shore power to this breaker ran it to the inverter, and then ran the output of the inverter into where the shore power used to go. So it sounds a little bit complicated, but it's really not. I ran two wires in order to get that. So now the inverter will power all of these circuit breakers in the house. Doesn't matter which outlet, they all work off of that. So let's show you what I did kind of behind here so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so we were just looking at the circuit breaker panel, which is on this side of the bed. And this panel covers up the back axis of it. And it's just held in with staples. So it's not too hard to get to. And if I take this, swing you guys over here. So there is the back panel of the uh, circuit breaker panel. 
So you can see I've got a junction box here labeled in. This is line in. This is what comes from the automatic transfer switch, which is on uh, one of the compartments so that it can switch between either generator or shore power. So this is your 120 volts coming into the house. And all I did was splice that into a wire. So you'll see a wire coming up the back side of it that then runs underneath and around the side on the back of my bathroom and then up to the inverter, which I'll show you as well. And then the inverter, I've got one box that says out, it may be hard to read. That's out of the inverter, again, splices the wire, comes in here and into where my shore power used to connect. So I've got one labeled in, this is in house power coming in, going into the inverter, and then I've got another junction box over there labeled out. So pretty simple, right? Just bypassing what was originally coming in here, going to the inverter, and then feeding the output of the inverter into my circuit breaker panel. We are under my dinette, which is where I installed our inverter. And luckily for me, this is where the factory inverter was originally installed as well. Now, first off, there's a couple of wires I want to talk about. You can see these orange wires. One says, in my terrible handwriting, in, one says out. So the in is coming from in the back. The original automatic transfer switch wire that I extended coming into this inverter coming out is going out to the circuit breaker panel. Additionally, there were two other circuits here that when the factory inverter was on, it would power like three outlets in the coach. I spliced them together. So they're in essence starting and ending back there at the circuit breaker panel. So it acts as if, uh, as if those are online all the time. There's two modules that I highly recommend getting with this inverter. This first one you see back here, this is the Bluetooth module so that you can use the app on your phone to see what the inverter is doing. And then there is this one here. Uh, it's called a Mark III. It's basically a USB on one end, RJ45 on the other, and I've got a spare RJ45 cable here so that if I need to reprogram the inverter or I need to update the firmware on the inverter, I can do that as well. That's the only means you have of making significant changes. And when I say significant, I mean going from like lead acid batteries to lithium. So like I said, the original inverter was installed here. A lot of the wiring was already run here. So I just reused the same space. There's plenty of airflow. You can't see it, but underneath the dinette, there is a vent grate as well. So this gets plenty of ventilation. Probably the hardest part of all of this was running these two new wires all the way to the back in the bedroom where the circuit breaker panel was. Other than that, the 12 volt battery cables were already here. There was already plenty of mounting space with ventilation for it. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy this little video about what we did with our inverter charger and replacing that. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Hope you stick around for, for the next video and whatever I put online next. Cheers.